CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. It is 7.33 p.m. on Tuesday, July 23rd, 2024. Good evening. My name is Christian Klein. I am the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals, and I'm calling this meeting of the board to order. First, I'd like to confirm all members and anticipated officials are present. Uh, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, we have Roger DuPont. Here. Patrick Hanlon. Here. Ben Holly. Here. Daniel Riccadelli. Here. Elaine Hoffman. Here. And Adam LeBlanc. Here. Nice to have all of you with us. Uh, on behalf of the town, we have Colleen Ralston, our zoning assistant. Here. Have you with us? Um, and I don't believe anyone else from the town is with us tonight. Um, so we have two hearings where we're making we're voting on the final decision tonight. One is docket 3802 296 Washington Street, and the other is 3806 109 Wright Street. Um, those applicants are not required to be here for us to take the final vote, but if they are here, um, they're welcome to be with us. That brings us to item uh, 3807 39 Amherst Street. Uh, Scott Smith. Uh, Good to see you with us. I am here, yes. Uh, and I'm glad Karen Steiner, and we expect our architect to join us shortly. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, appearing for docket 3808, uh, 22 Lawrence Lane, we have uh, Brian Hodes and Kristen Williams. Hello. Good to have you with us. Thanks. And then for docket 3809, 314 Massachusetts Avenue, I have Arthur Javellis. I see you in the picture. Right. Here. Good to have you with us. So this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted Thank remotely, yeah. consistent with an act making appropriations for the fiscal year 2023 to provide for supplementing certain existing appropriations and for certain other activities and projects signed into law on March 29th, 2023. This act includes an extension until March 31st, 2025 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Public bodies may continue holding meetings remotely without a quorum of the public body physically present at a meeting location so long as they provide adequate alternative access to remote meetings. Public bodies may meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website, identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference. Others are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name, or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you to please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. And as chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. As the board will be taking up new business at this meeting, as chair, I make the following land acknowledgement. Whereas the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Town of Arlington, Massachusetts, discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as monotomy, an Algonquin word meaning swift waters, the board hereby acknowledges that the Town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. Just a quick notice on our procedures. At the end of the discussion of each individual hearing this evening, the board will vote to either continue the public hearing to a specific date to continue receiving testimony on the matter, or the board will vote to close the public hearing, ending the receipt of new testimony. The board will then proceed to the next item on the agenda. Over the coming days, the board will prepare a draft decision based on the testimony received and the discussions that took place during the public hearing, and that decision will be voted on at the next available meeting of the board. In practical terms, for those hearings before the board this evening, there will not be an official vote for or against your project this evening. That vote will take place at our next available meeting when we have a draft decision to review and upon which our vote will rest. 
with that, we're moving on to our administrative items. These items relate to final votes on applications before the board and the operation of the board. And as such, will generally be conducted without input from the general public. The board will not take up any new business on prior hearings, nor will there be the introduction of any new information on matters previously brought before the board. That brings us to item two on our agenda, which is a vote of the board to authorize the chair to sign decisions on behalf of the board. Um, so for a very long time, uh, each individual member has, has signed the decisions, um, which is sort of a cumbersome process and can stretch out over extended period of time. And so uh, starting with the last meeting, we started to um, shorten that up so that the only the chair has to sign the decision and they can do so on behalf of the board. Uh, the last meeting we had done this by voting independently on each individual decision. Tonight, the plan is to have a vote, a single vote to allow the board, the chair to sign on behalf of the board for the remainder of the chair's term, uh, which will run until April. Um, and so with that, um, I have a proposed motion, but I wanted to ask Mr. Hanlon if he had a, a motion instead. No, I am happy to uh, propose the chair's motion. Okay. Great. So with that, um, I would move that the members of the Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Arlington hereby authorize the duly elected chair of the board to sign decisions on behalf of all the members. This authority shall expire at the end of the chair's term of office. Second. Okay, so this is a roll call vote of the board to authorize the chair to sign on behalf of the board. Um, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. Ms. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. LeBlanc? Aye. And the chair votes aye. That motion is passed. Thank you all. With that, that brings us to item three on our agenda, which is a vote on the decision for docket 3802-296 Washington Street. Uh, this is a case that the board heard on um, May 25th and July 9th. Uh, and we have a, it is both a special permit and a variance. We have a decision that was written by Mr. Hanlon distributed to the board for questions and comments and final decision posted uh, late this afternoon. Are there any <clears throat> questions in regards to the final decision for uh, 296 Washington Street? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon? Uh, just would like the record to reflect that this is that the hearings in that case were June 25th rather than May 25th. Oh, thank you so much. So June 25th and July 9th. Okay, with that, um, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Thank you. So a roll call vote of the members of the board who were present at the hearing. Uh, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Riccadelli. Aye. Mr. LeBlanc. Aye. And the chair votes aye. That is passed. That brings us to number four on our agenda, docket 3806-109 Wright Street. Uh, this was a case that was heard before the board on July 9th and a written decision prepared by uh, myself and Mr. Hanlon distributed to the board for questions and comments uh, on a final version posted this afternoon. Are there any further questions or comments in regards to the decision for uh, 109 Wright Street? Seeing none, uh, Chair will move that the Zoning Board of Appeals for Town of Arlington approve and adopt the written decision for 109 Wright Street. Granting a special permit under sections 542B6 in the zoning bylaw. Second. So, a vote of the members who were uh, present at that hearing. Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. And the chair votes aye. That is approved. That brings us to our hearings this evening. Before opening tonight's meeting for public hearings, here's some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of tonight's business. After I announce each agenda item, I will ask the applicant to introduce himself or themselves and make their presentations to the board. I'll then request that members of the board ask what questions they have on the proposal. 
After the board's questions have been answered, I will open the meeting for public comment. At the conclusion of public comment, the board will deliberate and vote to either continue or to close the public hearing. All votes will be conducted by roll call vote. The final vote on any matter before the board will be taken at a subsequent meeting once the written decision has been drafted and provided to the board. The decision will then be filed with the town clerk starting the 20 day appeal period under state law. After that time, the applicant may proceed with their building permit. However, under state law, no decision granted by this board shall take effect until a certified copy of the final decision has been filed with and recorded at the Middlesex South Registry of Deeds in Cambridge by the applicant. So with that, I will move us on to item five on our agenda this evening, which is docket 3807, 39 Amherst Street. This is a case that the board started um, on July 9th and continued until this evening. And so with that, I will turn to the applicant and um, tell us where, where we are today. Uh, well, this is Scott Smith, the homeowner. I'm hoping my architect, Vali Onas, Ian, can do most of the talking. I do see him on the call. Mr. Hennessy, are you with us? All right. Hi, everyone. I'm on the mobile device about to switch to a uh, computer. I apologize. I wasn't quite ready. I thought we would be a little bit early, uh, later. Ah, no worries. But we can uh, start the discussion here, and um, I'll be joining on another uh, session from a computer in a minute. Um, gonna... So the latest is that uh, we have had some discussions with uh the zoning enforcement officer mr mike champia champa um and there's uh, some question about the roof deck option that was brought up last session and so we've come up with a uh change to the design where we have a uh, instead of a pitched roof we have a flat roof with a usable deck on it and a door to access that roof deck from the second floor Let me switch. switch to the second floor uh, plan for new work. Um, as you see, so this is the at the second floor level, this is the existing house, the existing porch over the entrance mm -hmm. that faces onto Amherst Street. Um, and then this is the new roof over the proposed addition. So the, That's correct. the existing roof, uh, the proposed roof initially was pitched. Um, but the issue that we had run into is that there was usable open space on the site that needed to be preserved. And the <clears throat> zoning bylaw does allow the uh, usable open space to extend to a uh, to a roof, so long as it's not 10 feet above the lowest level of habitation. Um, and so th what the applicant had discussed and had um, brought to the zoning official uh, was this idea to do a flat roof instead over the new addition uh, where the proposed deck is. So that's what we're seeing here. Um, I'm just going to go back. Uh, so this is the existing site plan. So as we had discussed at the previous meeting, this area qualifies for usable open space because it's 25, more than 25 feet on each side. Um, and because of the area of it, um, it does qualify for usable open space for the house. So with that, the, it needed to be preserved. And this is the proposal. So if I could, uh, Mr. Haney, if you wanted to go ahead and just explain sort of what the plan is here. So in essence, we're in, in, a, in the footprint view that we're looking at right now we're simply extending it's basically two rectangles combined together represented by the cross hatch pattern and so the original 25 by 25 that's down below a little more than 25 in the uh, up down direction on the plan is preserved and then the rest of the deck roof deck is added 
to it. Yeah. And so we end up actually with more open space as per the definition than we had before. If in fact, that's how we're interpreting it. Yeah. So one, one question I had had, and I had, had a discussion um, earlier in the week with, uh, with the building inspector regarding this question. So the, in the past, the board has reviewed applications where there have there has been exterior space that qualifies as usable open space, and it is on multiple levels. And in those cases, and most often there is a mean of conveyance between the two levels. So there's a set of stairs. Um, if you remember, there was a case on Mount Vernon Street where there was a portion of the usable open space that was on the land, and part of it was on a deck that was rather high. Um, but they were connected by stairs, and we agreed with the interpretation from the building inspector that that was a typical interpretation from the town that that qualifies for usable open space. Um, in this application, the original proposal had been that the, that the deck on top of the roof and the adjacent land, which are both required to make up the required area for usable open space, there was no connection between the two. And um, I had gone back and forth with the building inspector and said I had thought it would, would be important to have that connection between the two. But I do want to bring that question before the board as to what they think. Um, in terms of usable open space, is that means of con conveyance between the two floors or the two levels that in conjunction make up the usable open space, is having that stairs an important feature? Or can it can those two areas summed together still be make up the usable open space even if there's not a direct way to get from one to the other? Mr. Certainly, I, I'm sorry. I just want to make a real quick comment on that. Oh, please. This is obviously a single family uh, house, and the only occupants are the owners, and so there's access through the house to the to the deck and it it happens to not be direct from outside but there's the they have exclusive use to everything on this property including the house and access to the deck that's all okay no thank you for that clarification so this is uh let me find the proposed so this is the proposed so um as we had discussed last time entry into the house um and then this is the existing stair here. Uh, that stair would lead up to the second floor and then through this office, um, you would have direct access out onto the deck. Correct. So it would be connected through the house. Thank you for that clarification. I appreciate that. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Um, just thinking about kind of your question a little bit. Um, you know, when it comes to a situation like this, I buy the argument a little bit more that the conveying stair inside the house counts as the means of conveyance between the two outdoor spaces. Um, I also think in this case, the portion of the deck that most meaningfully contributes to the usable open space is a fairly small percentage compared to the larger open space in this particular case. You know, it's really just that little section um, of that overlap that is really what we're looking for in terms of contributing to the overall number. So I I feel pretty okay with with um with this in the, in this case. So one question I did have, kind of a, a counter question to that, I guess, in a way is, uh, when I was looking through the drawings, the materials on the on the roof was a standing metal, sea metal roof. Um, that I I was curious if how others felt about that, if if that counts as kind of like a usable, walkable uh, surface in people's minds.
So Mr. Onesian, was the intent that the the deck surface would be standing seam roof? No, um, that's not practical in terms of using, uh, making it a usable space because mm -hmm. the term in capital U is usable. Yep. Um, and so a standing seam would not be practical in this case. We would propose a rubber roof. Um, I mean, ideally it would be a composite, completely flat deck on top of a slightly pitched rubber roof beneath it to allow water for drainage. However, we have a really challenging condition where the roof structure needs to be at least, you know, not at least, but a two by 12 in order to meet insulation requirements and structural uh, reasons. What that means is that we either have to lower the ceiling even more now that we have to flatten the roof and ceiling above, um, or in order to keep the ceiling height the same on the first floor, we're now gonna have uh, the top of the structure be above the existing office floor by several inches. And we're gonna have a step up over mm -hmm. a threshold and down onto the deck because there should be some uh, lip there to keep snow and rain from coming in. Yep. And to make that even more challenging, the roof above the main house has a soffit that's quite low and very close to the window head as it stands now. So we're squeezed on both the top and the bottom to make this accessible. Mm -hmm. um, and we've lost the sort of pitched roof that would create some taller space in the new bedroom below. So we've already, we're compromising that. And um, you know, the roof mm -hmm. up here is obviously gonna be usable in order to meet the definition. However, from a practical standpoint, the whole purpose of this project is to keep the living level on <clears throat> first floor for the owner with the physical challenges um, yep. not getting any easier. So as, as Mr. LeBlanc had mentioned, sort of the, the important part of the roof that for the, in order to complete the, you know, complete the square as it were for the usable open space is this front portion. That's correct. Um, and so the, I believe this is the existing wall of the house. If the deck just covered this lower portion here, is that is that any advantage to you in terms of that you could have a higher ceiling in the bedroom, but the ceiling might be constrained over the hallway, laundry, and rest and bathroom? I actually thought about that just to have a low section um, towards this uh, Rawson Road uh, side. Mm -hmm. However, it creates a new challenge where now the structure itself is going to be stepped uh, on on top. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now we have to deal with that. The railings change, the flashing and, you know, all of that changes. So it's probably not any easier in terms of uh, constructability. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon? So... On the question of of whether or not these of the way in which these things have to be connected, the I think it's it's helpful to try to stick as close as we can to the language of the open space definition. Um, and there are two. The key word there is accessible. Um, one is uh, in the general definition that uh, the oh, use the you, the open space that's fit for recreation and the, the other kinds of similar activities have to be readily accessible to all of those for whom it is required. And in this particular case, all of those for whom it's required consists of the residents of a single family dwelling who would have access to it, whether there's a particular stairs or not. Uh, secondly, is the, the provision that specifically relates to roofs reads, such space may include open area accessible to and developed for the use of the occupants of the building and located upon a roof not more than 10 feet above mm. the level of the lowest story used for dwelling purposes. And again, there's no effort in the definition in the bylaw to specify the exact way in which, uh, in which uh, it has to be accessible. 
Uh, and it, it seems to me that that is context dependent. And as Mr. LeBlanc has mentioned the way and and uh, Mr. Oanesian has, in this particular case, it is perfectly accessible, even though you go through the house to it, and it's not directly accessible to the remaining portion of the open space. So I would be reluctant to go any further than the in being restrictive than the uh, bylaw says. And uh, in that case, it seems to me that uh, this would pass muster under the language I've read to you. All right, thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Mr. Chair, I, I agree with I agree with Mr. Hanlon and uh, Mr. Blanc. I, I think I think also the the language in the bylaw that addresses the balconies and roofs specifically as part of open space mentions that in the application uh, uh, that access and usability and service materials should be depicted, which which leads me to believe that uh, those are all open questions that we should be considering as part of this application. And and in this in this case, I think it it meets the definition that we're looking for. All right. Thank you. Other questions or comments from the board? Okay, none. Um, okay. I'll now open the meeting for public comment. Public questions and comments are taken as they relate to the matter at hand, should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing its decision. Members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the reactions tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone may dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. You'll be called upon by the chair. You'll be asked to give your name and address for the record. You'll be given time for your questions and comments. All questions that should be addressed through the chair. Please remember to speak clearly. For anyone wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing, the chair will allow those wishing to speak for the first time to go first. Once all public questions and comments have been addressed, the public comment period will be closed and I'll do my best to show any documents requested during such time. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the share. Are there any members of the public who wish to um, address this matter, which is the hearing for 39 Amherst? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the public comment period. Um, so what the board has before it, as we had discussed previously and discussed this evening, um, so this is an existing single family house. They're looking to do a single family addition to make the house uh, more usable by the occupants. And the, the stumbling block we ran into last time was that they did actually have usable open space. And so we needed to make sure that we could still accommodate that. Um, the applicant has come back to us with a way to do that. Um, and as we just have just discussed, um, it sounds like there is a uh, consensus on the board that the existing access through the house between the yard and what would be the deck on top of the first floor addition um, would be sufficient to meet the requirements of providing access for the usable open space for uh, those for whom it is intended. So, um, that being the case, um, the Mr. Chairman, can I just Hanlon? raise a question? If if that is the case, why is this case here? It's not a major addition, so we don't have jurisdiction over it for the, for that reason. Before, what we thought was that there was zero open space, and it was going mm -hmm. to a greater degree of zero, and so therefore there was a. Uh, uh, there was uh, a reason for a section six finding, but if it turns out that the applicant is provided compliant usable open space now and had compliant usable open space before, I don't see any other reason why they need a special permit. And we perhaps ought to be just dismissing this and letting them go to Mr. Champa and, and, and go about their business. Uh, we are here because I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Hanley, if I may respond. Sure, please. Um, 
we did uh, last time go back to, uh, you know, according to the board's instructions, go back to Mr. Champa to review this. And he said, if the zoning board uh, approves this as a usable open space, then he will also uh, approve it for the building permit. So it may be that your, inter you know, the, the question here is if you all agree that this is not this is from existing to existing usable open space, then that's the determination. It's not really a vote at this point. It's just a determination that um, for the for Mr. Champy to to hear from you saying that he can approve it by right. So, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hanley, just remind us that we have a we actually have a a precedent where where the situation came up before this was the case about the adu uh on the snyder case on the uh uh on on uh whether or not something was attached or not um and there too uh, when you had the view that we that we took of it uh, the applicant needed to uh did not need a special permit anymore because uh, he could proceed by right under the ADU ordinance. And uh, mm -hmm. and uh, at that point, what we did is is made the finding we did, and then um, and this and then dismissed the case. Uh, it's it's. I mean, the thing is, we don't have anything to grant. There's mm -hmm. no reason for a special permit because on the way we on the way assuming that the <clears throat> board in general feels the way several of us have expressed up to now, uh, this is doable by right and and doesn't need the special permit. Um, we could conceivably dismiss it, making a finding that this is doable by right. Uh, we might want to delay this. Well, I, we may want to make absolutely sure that that is a way that Mr. Champa would accept, but. Mm -hmm. um it, it, but it seems to me that that we don't have the ability to grant a special permit because there's nothing in the bylaw that authorizes a special permit in this particular case it's a by right situation mr chair may i ask a question about that yes mr Riccadelli. so maybe i'm looking at the wrong section so mr allen just correct me if i am but in the 5.3 one eight section it says that for balconies and roofs as portions of usable open space it says that um the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals or the redevelopment board as applicable may grant a special permit that private balconies with at least a dimension of six feet and open space on a roof more, not more than 10 feet above the level of the lowest story may be counted for up to 50 percent of the usable open space so that sounds to me like we need to grant a special permit for that finding. Could you, could you remind me? I mean, I've got the thing up. If you can give me the citation. Yeah, Well, that would be a hook. It makes it easier to it makes it easier to do. So, what we would be looking for is granting a special permit under five three eighteen that allows the use of the. I guess I'm a little bit struck by the idea of private balconies, but. Uh, but that sounds fine. I mean, it's it's a little bit inconsistent with the definition, uh, but but that that would work. Mm -hmm. The other way to look at it is under the definition of a special permit. Effectively, any action that the board takes can be considered a special permit by the definition. So, but I think this this Mr. Rigadelli brought forward this is a little cleaner. Yeah, I would be very reluctant to do the earlier because my view, at least, is that is that unless the 
or unless the bylaw explicitly al allows for a special permit, it's not allowed. But that's mm -hmm. the whole reason why the very first thing that we insist on is a, for the applicant to state what is the provision that authorizes the special permit. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it, otherwise, what happens is special permit would would then completely usurp the area of variances because we do that too, uh, and we're not really allowed to do that. You need to have a predicate in the bylaw to allow that. But here, the, there is a bylaw. I mean, this does have the, as Mr. Recadelli points out, it has the implication that, uh, notwithstanding the definition, you can only allow the uh, roof space to count. Uh, if you've taken a special look at it, and I'm perfectly happy to premise this on 5318 and issue a permit on that basis. And that provision does not require any additional findings beyond those for a special permit. Well, it does sort of. I mean, you do have to be able to to find that it's uh, not counting for more than 50% and that uh, it has to have a least dimension of at least six feet, and it's not more than 10 feet above the level of the lowest story. So all of those things are findings we'd have to make in order to be able to find that uh, you qualify for the special permit. Okay. So typically at this point, unless there's any further questions on this, um, so looking at this as a request for a special permit under section 5318, um, there are the standard findings that the board is required to make for a special permit under section 333. And in addition, we would be looking at findings um, regarding the percentage of usable open space, uh, elevation, roof, and minimum dimension. So, um, judging, so, let me go ahead and change to my share here. Um, so looking at the site plan, um, so the first question is, is the percentage of space at the area on the balcony cannot exceed 50% of the required usable open space? Um, here, the amount of usable open space that's required is really it's just this portion um, in this area here, which is less than 50% of the overall area of the usable open space that's required. That's the first finding. Um, second has to do with the elevation of the roof. Um, so as we see here, uh, if the level one is at zero feet, the level two is at nine feet, so that is less than um, 10 feet above, excuse me, less than 10 feet above the uh, the first floor of habitation. And then the third is that the minimum dimension is greater than six feet. Oops, too many. And as we see here, the minimum dimensions for that area are greater than six feet. So those board would be able to make those findings. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Hanlon. Just in terms of the, I'm a little bit unclear about what is the, the language of the, of 5318 is uh, uh, on a roof not more than 10 feet above the level of the lowest story used for dwelling purposes. Mm -hmm. And there's a question in my mind as to what the, the that level is, uh, whether that is the floor of that space that's used for dwelling purposes or whether it's the ceiling basically because the underlying idea is that if you've got you know if you have an intervening an any an intervening story because this is mm -hmm. frequently being used in in connection with multiple story buildings and it's not a, immediately connected to a part of the building that's used for for dwelling purposes that 
it doesn't count. And I, I would have just assumed that a roof that is actually right on mm -hmm. the level that's used for dwelling purposes would essentially be zero difference between the two. And I'm not 100% sure that I mean, that's the way I would have read it. Mm -hmm. And the chair is just sort of read it in the opposite plausible way that you look at at the floor below. And But that would mean that if you had more than 10 feet at that level, then you wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to do this, which which I mean, 10 feet is a, is not that restrictive. But I, I just raised the question of what level means in this situation. No, that's a very good question. Um... The bylaw is not clear. It does not define what that means, as best as I can tell. Um, I'm comfortable with your interpretation. Um, I think the you know the logic behind it certainly makes sense. That you know you would want to make sure that if you had an 11 foot tall, if you had you know if you had 10 foot ceilings, that shouldn't preclude you from doing this. So. Um, yeah. I think the applicant does well. He, he does fine the, either way. So we just right. don't want to com commit ourselves like, to a view. I guess I would, yeah. So then I, I guess I would just ask that if anybody on the board has any issues with any of those three findings being made. Uh, seeing none. Um, can we move on to the findings, the standard findings for a special permit, which are in section 333 of the zoning bylaw? Uh, the first is that the adverse effects of the proposed use will not outweigh its beneficial impacts. Um, the proposed use is the, is the addition of the living space for the current um, inhabitants of the, of the house and will continue for future generations. Um, this is a very modest addition um, on a single level at the effectively between the garage and the and the house. Um, and the, the beneficial impacts in terms of maintaining the light for the adjacent neighbors, maintaining uh, the space, not impacting any part of the tree cover. Um, all those are beneficial um, and not impacted by this proposal. Uh, the second is that the requested use is allowed or allowed by special permit in the district. Um, as we noted, five, section 5318 does allow um, the use of a balcony as a part of usable open space under special permit. So this is allowable um, under the bylaws. The requested use is essential or desirable to the public convenience or welfare. Um, so allowing current um, residents of our town to better enjoy their property and to maintain uh, their living here in town is a is definitely a benefit to the town. This also uh, allows for um, an expansion of the property, expansion of the, of the tax base for the town, which is of net benefit for the town as well. Um, the request will not create undue traffic congestion or impair, uh, excuse me, impair pedestrian safety. Uh, this does not impact the number of vehicles on the property, and it does nothing with any of the existing sight lines that exist on the property. Uh, the request will not overload any public system. Uh, so the existing systems in terms of um, electricity, water, sewer, none of those will be um, increased to any noticeable effect. Um, the special regulations of the requested use are fulfilled. We had gone the, we had done those three previously. Uh, that was the finding about the percentage of space, the elevation of the roof, and the minimum dimension uh, that are required under 5318. Uh, requested use will not impair the character or the integrity of the district. Uh, this is maintaining a, an existing single family use on the property. Um, is replacing a space on the backyard that is effectively occupied currently by a deck and it will just be replaced by a single story addition. It will not cause a, a great change to the neighborhood. Um, the requested use will not be detrimental to the public health or welfare. Um, there is nothing about the existing single family use or the proposed single family use that would cause a detriment and there is no excess of a use that would be considered detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, are there any questions from the board on those findings? Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. 
This isn't really a question on those findings, but I would point out that in a, unlike in variances where we are not allowed to take into account the individual circumstances of the applicant and special needs that a particular applicant may have for a uh, uh, for an action on our part in the special permit, you may take those things into account. And I would just like to observe that the that the proposed reasoning reason for for this accommodation to the applicant uh, is particularly compelling. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. So, should the board be in favor of this application? Um, there are three standard conditions that the, we would include in a grant for a special permit, uh, which I'll read into the record. The first is that plans and specifications approved by the board for the special permit shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. There should be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. The second is the building inspector is hereby notified they are to monitor the site to proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time they determine that violations are present. Building inspector shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw and under the provisions of chapter 40, section 21D of the Massachusetts general laws and institute non-criminal complaints. If necessary, the building inspector may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with section 3.1. And number three is that the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to the special permit grant. So those are the three standard conditions. I would ask the board if there are additional conditions which they would recommend um, at this time. Mr. Chair. Mr. LeBlanc. Uh, I wasn't sure if we wanted a condition to clarify the uh, roof material. Um, mm. Since the plans do say that it is a standing seam metal, so it just would right. help clarify that for later on. Yes, think about it as well. Section three eighteen uh, has a the last sentence is that the the proponent's application shall include drawings which depict surface materials, planting areas, fences, railings, benches, access, and other similar items. So I was thinking if we just had a that the, the applicant shall submit to the building inspector um, drawings detailing the, and then include that as a quotation, surface materials, planting areas, fences, railings, benches, access, and other similar items for approval. I think that was a leftover uh, note from a previous drawing where we had a standing seam metal roof that we uh, should have just taken off, but we'll clarify. Well, Mr. LeBlanc, does that address your concern? Uh, yeah, I think so. I just want to make sure that they don't get flagged for a deviation later on. Oh, okay, perfect. Are there any other conditions that the board would want? Okay, seeing none. Uh, so this, uh, so this is a uh, a special permit grant. We have the four conditions, um, as was our procedure. The the next thing would be to um, take a vote to close the public hearing. Um, and but before I do that, I would just ask Mr. Hanlon. Um, he would be prepared to um, draft a uh, decision on this case um, recommending approval of the special permit with four conditions. Yes. Perfect. So with that, the chair will take a motion to close the public hearing for docket 3807, 39 Amherst Street. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. So vote of the board to close the hearing. Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. And um, the chair votes aye. And so that is closed. 
Thank you all very much. Appreciate you coming back. Thank you. And we will uh, vote on a final decision at the next hearing. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, find my agenda. So that brings us to item six on our agenda this evening, which is docket 3808-22 Lawrence Lane. Um, this is a request for a special permit under section 539D of the zoning bylaws. So if I could ask the applicant to go ahead and introduce themselves and tell us what they are proposing to do. Sure. Hello. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time to uh, to hear this tonight. This is uh, Kristen and Brian Hodes, twenty two Lawrence Lane, and I think uh, like the, uh, the 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 previous case did, we're, we'll pass it over to our architect to really uh, give it the deep. Larry. Yes. Good evening. My name is Larry Cohen. Yeah, I'm the designer with Architect of Suburban Boston. Yeah, I'm working with uh, Kristen and Brian yeah, on proposing a you know, sheltered you know, front portico for their existing landing yeah, and stair at the front of the home. Yeah, yeah. Am I correct that everybody has is looking at you know, the uh, existing photo uh, and rendering that we provided? Uh, I am going to bring that up and. Just opening it right now. Here. So this is all the way down to the way. Yeah, there we go. So this home was renovated. No, go ahead. Yeah, in the past, originally was just a single box. And that front portion was added on you know, when there was a whole house renovation done. You know. But you know, what, failed to be, what failed to occur at the time, which seems visually to make a lot of sense, is some sort of you know, small roof over the doorway, you know, the main entrance into the house, you know, both for sheltering the occupants and sheltering anything that gets left on the, you know, on the upper landing. Yeah. So if we can scroll Further up, you can see what the proposal is, you know, which is a simple open portico. Yeah. Front. So the existing landing and stairs all stay the same, exact same size. Yeah, and we're just putting up the columns in the small gable roof that you can see matches the existing architecture and, and pitch you know, of the existing upper roof. Yeah, and really enhances both serves a function and really enhances the look of the property. And so there's no change to the existing brick steps and, and stoop at the door. It's really just the addition of the portico. That is correct. And so this is the existing site plan. Uh, so it's just this portion in red, which is the top landing. That Correct. And I think, I think, I think there's a 0.5% change in open space. Okay. Um, and then, the, so it's a 24 foot. Uh, 24 foot to the corner of the house. house. Correct. Where's this uh, structural plan? There we go. And so it would be reducing that by approximately 4.3 feet. Correct. Okay. Setback. Are there any questions from the board? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. So do I understand right that that 4.3 feet is just is going out to where the steps already are? Correct. So as yep. the only it does that count as an extension of the of the landing? 
I mean, what's good, it just is in common sense. What's going on here is that they're yeah. putting a portico over it. The actual structure is exactly where it was before, and it is not really extending further into the into the uh, into the setback than it already is. Uh, I'm just having a hard time understanding why it is that the language in in section D here is requiring a special permit for this. Um, I think it's because it's a step and landing that is being built upon. Oh, I see. The portico is building on the. Okay, I I guess I yeah, see. That. It's, it's within the it's within the front yard setback, and that existing landing is being built upon, and so therefore, it requires okay. a special permit. But I, I guess I think, to me, it, it matters considerably. It matters considerably that that the that the landing is not actually that there is no reduction in the actual. In this particular case, in applying the factors, there's no redu reduction in the actual intrusion into the into the required front yard. Correct. It's just that we the. Bylaw deals with deck with landings and porches differently. Um, so unenclosed steps may project more than 10 feet by right, but that's not necessarily the case with porches. So we just want yeah. to make sure that we're. I you understand. Any other questions from the board? Mr. Chair. Mr. LeBlanc. Uh, just one question. Uh, if I could just get the at the the front of the kind of enclosure that they're building the roof enclosure, is that kind of it's not fully enclosed? It seems like it was kind of like a filigree element at the top there. You could see through it. Are you talking about is that up the upper triangle? Yeah, that's actually open, exactly. and we're using you know, actually what are aluminum balusters. Uh, is what you see as the filler, but the view will actually go right through it. Okay, that that's what I, that's what it looked like the rendering was trying to depict. So I just wanted to to clarify. I think it just helps add to the kind of openness that we're we're doing here, and that it doesn't uh, really add too much to this uh, front entry in terms of its massing. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Dupont. Just uh, from an aesthetic point of view, I think when I saw the pictures of it without this proposed uh, addition or uh, portico, the center piece of the building looks very uh, tall and sort of stands out. And I really think that this does a lot to uh, break that up visually. I think it makes it much more appealing from the street. So I think it is a good idea. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and open the meeting for public comment. Again, public comments and questions are taken as they relate to the matter at hand should be directed to the board. Those uh, wishing to uh, uh, digitally raise their hand may do so using the reactions tab on the Zoom application. And those calling in by phone may dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. So with that, are there any members of the public who wish to address this application uh, for 22 Lawrence Lane? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the public comment period again. Um, so what the board has before it, this is a special permit request under section 539D. Um, seeking to uh, effectively add a portico over an existing stair landing uh, to create a porch on the front of the house because this is within the required setback and it is building on to an existing landing um, requires a special permit. Um, the zoning bylaw 
section landings in the required setback are not considered to be within the foundation wall and may not be enclosed, extended, or built upon except by special permit. So with that, um, the board needs to do a special permit, but there are no additional findings that are required by the bylaw. Um, so the required findings for a special permit. Uh, so the first is that the adverse effects of the proposed use will not outweigh its beneficial impacts. Um, proposed use, uh, this is an existing single family house, so it will remain a single family house. And the proposal here is to provide some shelter for uh, the homeowners when they enter and exit their property, which will be of great benefit to them and anyone who uh, comes to their house and will not um, cause any adverse effects. The requested use is allowed by special permit within the district under section, uh, we said 539D. Requested use is essential or desirable to the public convenience or welfare. Um, what this does is has been pointed out by Mr. DuPont is it actually makes the house uh, more attractive by breaking up the scale of that initial uh, large vertical piece in the center of the house. Um, and it creates a sheltered uh, space at the front door for those visiting the property. It um, improves the property and does so in a way that doesn't uh, cause any deleterious effects to anyone else. Um, the requested use does not create undue traffic congestion or impair pedestrian safety. It does nothing to the driveway, does not impact any existing sight lines on the property, uh, does not overload any public system. It has no effect on any systems um, that are used by the house. The special regulations for the requested use are fulfilled. There are no special regulations. Uh, requested use will not impair the character or integrity of the district. Um, in fact, quite the contrary, uh, this has been spoken uh, by members of the board. This will actually improve the appearance um, of the existing house. Um, the requested use will not that be a detriment to public health or welfare. Um, so have no impact on the, the health or welfare of uh, anyone in the neighborhood and will not cause an excess use detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, there's a single family house in a single family district, so it has no impact on the, uh, on the neighborhood. Um, are there any questions from the board in regards to those findings? Seeing none, I'll move on to conditions. Uh, so should the board vote approve uh, there are the three standard conditions, which we previously read into the record this evening, so I'll waive the reading at this time. Are there any additional um, conditions which the board feels would be appropriate for this special request grant? Seeing none. Um, then what the board has before it is a request for a special permit. The board has uh, determined that it's met the required findings for the granting of a special permit um, and has attached three conditions, the three standard conditions to that grant. Um, so with that, unless there are any further questions or comments from the board, um, the board should take a uh, vote to continue or close the hearing. And before that, I would ask Mr. Hanlon if he would coordinate the uh, drafting of a decision um, in favor of approval of the special permit request for 22 Lawrence Lane with the three conditions. Mr. Chairman, I'd be glad to. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. So with that, the chair will accept a motion to close the public hearing for docket 3808, 22 Lawrence Lane. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. The roll call vote of the board um, to close this public hearing. Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. And the chair votes aye. This uh, hearing is closed. Thank you very much for coming before us this evening, and uh, we should be voting on the written decision at our next hearing, which is August Thank 13th. you very much. Thank Good you very much. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Bye. With that, returning to our agenda, this brings us to item seven on our agenda this evening, docket number 3809-314, Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, this is a request 
uh, for a special permit, also under section 359D of the zoning bylaw. Uh, so with that, I would ask the applicant to please introduce himself and tell us what they are proposing to do. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Arthur Javellis, and what we would like to do is extend the uh, existing approved design uh, to the left just slightly, uh, uh, approximately six feet, uh, due to the fact that there is a gas line where the uh, approved structure would be right under the left foot. So what happened when I had my guys um, putting in the uh, the cement feet there for the uh, for the porch, I said, hey, I says, do me a favor, take a picture of what you got done today so I can see how it's going. And when they sent me the picture, uh, I could see that the um, the leftmost foot was moved approximately three feet to the right um, to avoid the gas line there, uh, you know, after we called dig safe and all that, which essentially would put the uh, left railing um, as it uh, went back into the building right in the middle of the window. So, uh, you know, it's the, there's a few issues that... Um, uh, don't make sense to me. One is that it's a two-story porch and having a railing going into essentially the center of a window is blocking two potential emergency egresses. Um, the fact that you could not, we could not put the, uh, extend the porch over to where it was designed for because of the gas line. Um, you know, th that's why we want to, to kind of jump over it do the extension where originally it was going to uh, the window that you see where the left addition is, the porch was initially going to tie into the right side of that window, and we just simply want to extend it over to tie into the left side, which will basically hurdle over the uh, gas line, avoiding it. And I think in general, it's going to create something aesthetically that's more appealing uh, to the public and, and just, a better look for the for the for the uh, for the uh, whole neighborhood and for the building. Okay, thank and, you. Uh, so, I, yeah, it submitted uh, the plot plan uh, with the uh, uh, previous porch, the approved porch, and the addition, mm -hmm. and also the architectural designs uh, showing, um, you know, what what we're trying to do here okay. to avoid the gas line. So this is the existing site plan. Uh, so this is the porch that was initially on the property uh which is set, which is set 15 and a half feet back from the property line um at the front and 15.1 at the side and mm -hmm. then this is the site plan um which we just received so What's showing it the blue line? So you're saying that you were you have approval from the building department to expand the porch. Yeah, it was towards the, the like the, line? the porch. The porch originally was, you know, approximately six feet from the house projected out. Which you know we had a, um, you know a um like a love seat there, and there's just really no room for your feet there. So we had, um, proposed that uh. Uh, that design there, which was approved on what we built on. Um, and, and that's when I stopped them, when I saw that the uh, the uh, the blue line there, that, that porch that was approved was going to go into the uh, right side of the window there. And the addition is uh, where we want to jump over the gas line. The addition is this small, approximately six foot by five foot uh, addition there that would avoid the gas line and, and just, you know, solve a multitude of problems one you know the hardship of the gas line um you know two blocking two potential emergency egresses on the first and second floor and uh, hopefully uh, everyone agrees that this aesthetically will be more appealing to the town as well uh, so this is what i'm assuming was the set of plans that was initially improved approved by the town you're saying so it's yeah, increased yeah. To, to eight feet uh, we don't have any measured documentation for the existing porch the reason the reason i'm sort of driving on this is that 
the extension of the porch towards the street cannot be done by right. Um, so I'm a little confused as to why that was granted. Um, okay. Because you're you're already within the the front yard setback is 20 feet. Yeah. In the B1 district, and so you're you're already at 15 feet. You're all 15 and a half feet. You're already in the front yard setback, and you're increasing that nonconformity. Um, so that's something that the board will have to consider. But this is the that front elevation that you had uh, talked about, where you're proposing essentially to extend the porch over to align with the the end of the front part of that bay. Um, That's right. That that window on the left side, the 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 uh, uh, right where the uh, as you count the cement feet one two where number two is is exactly where the gas line is, which mm -hmm. the porch would have tied in uh, right there on the right side of that window that's kind of facing the street, and uh, essentially the the uh, railings or that are not up yet, the just the platform is up has been moved over approximately uh, three feet to the right of where your arrow is now um, okay. and would essentially place the railing that returned into the window, like directly in front of that window. It, it, it would just really not look good. And, um, mm -hmm. and uh, that's, that's the reason why uh, we wanted to extend it to the left there. Um, I, I did submit. I did submit the uh, the plot plan and everything to the town. Mm -hmm. So you know, you you would have yeah. to go over that. Um, yeah. Um. Then I would go ahead and stop the here for the moment. Um, back to members of the board. So. Um. What we have before us is essentially a request to add a portion of porch um, at the front of the building that arguably does or does not require. Um, I mean, I guess it is an extension of the existing porch in the front yard setback, so it does require a special permit. I'm a little confused as to why the building department didn't require the A special permit for the initial expansion of the porch um, at the front of the district. I don't have a copy of the building permit, so I don't know what exactly was covered by the initial yeah. building permit. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, I'm, I'm, I apologize. I, I I don't have a copy of it either. My contractor does, so I I could get it to you for sure. Um, I just don't have it handy because we we first of all we lost power and my computer was was down. Oh, I, we, we no. just got our power back, but I could get that for you. Okay. I assume you probably have access to it anyway. So yeah. No, we can get it from the apartment. Um so I guess my, my question for the board is sort of what is their sense of um of this request. Yeah, and I'm I'm not sure mr chair about the uh, uh like you said the the uh setbacks and, and a, a special uh uh would you say a special permit required um if there is i mean i'd have to backtrack and and uh you know make this right i'm you know here to cooperate with the town in any way i can um the only thing i wanted to make a comment on is that as you go towards the addition i think that that even gets more space there. It's tighter, more on the right side of that porch than it is on the left, at least from what I saw from the plot plan there. So I don't know if that would be conforming or still non-conforming. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. So I, I guess um, I'll be honest with you. I'm not entirely sure I understand the proposal. So, you know, not being an architect, some of what I'm looking at just isn't all that clear to me. Um, but I think that the question you posed about what was in the building permit is crucial because I don't feel comfortable making a decision without knowing what sort of the baseline is. 
So for me, I'd want to make sure we have all of our ducks in order before we go forward with the discussion about a special permit allowing for a further intrusion into the front yard where we're not even sure how the existing or proposed uh, intrusion that's part of the building permit, we're not even sure about how that has come to be. So I, mm -hmm. I'm just unsure enough that I don't really have enough to go on. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, I completely agree with Mr. DuPont. I think this is one of those things where, uh, and I, this is implies no res uh, disrespect to Mr. Javellis, but the the situation here is sufficiently unclear that I think that we need to be having a conversation with uh, Mr. Champa and understanding both what has happened already and why and how this relates to that. And uh, uh, it 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 might have been better if we had had this conversation already, but we haven't. And I think that this this ought to be continued to our next time, and we ought to use the time in the meantime to uh, make sure that we understand all of this in in a way that you can't expect Mr. Travellis to understand it, and that uh, we see clearly how this all fits together. <laughs> You know, I, I I totally get what you're saying as far as the uh, as far as the setbacks. Um, you know, that's that's why I hired the architect and the contractor. So I assume they, uh, you know, everything uh, was submitted correctly um, and understood. Uh, but regardless, uh, you know, whatever uh, we, we're here to make the town happy. Um, you know, to cooperate in any way we can. Um, so in, in the interim or the meanwhile of you. Um, verifying why that permit was issued and things mm -hmm. like that. And just to clarify one of the questions uh, one of the board members had, uh, the reason for the extension is to avoid the gas line because, uh, you know, it, it aesthetically and safety wise and for a multitude of reasons, it just doesn't make sense to keep the left side of that porch if it was, even if it was not set back, uh, even if it did not project out another two feet, if it was the six feet where it was, it doesn't make sense for it to end where it is uh, to go back to that window because of the gas line. You know, all the materials have been bought. Uh, that, like I said, they started putting this thing up and I, I'm the one that stopped them and uh, said, hey, you know, we, we, we got to do something else here because this is just not going to look good. Mm -hmm. but especially because, because of the gas line. Yeah. So I was able to pull up the building card, which yeah. does indicate that there is a there is a permit issued to remove the existing deck and build a new two story deck on the front. But there's no drawings affiliated with it that I was able to access. Um, so I'm not entirely sure uh, what the what the building department had. So I think to the, the to the point that Mr. Hanlon and and others have brought forward, I think. It would make sense um, if the, and it sounds like the applicant would be in agreement that um, the board uh, vote to continue um, this hearing so that we can better clarify what exactly has been approved by the building department um, and what the, what acts the board needs to take. And I think it would be good for the, um, uh, for Mr. Javellis, if you could talk to your architect and maybe get together you know, a more complete set of drawings. Um, and especially if you can have a, you know, a revised site plan that indicates what the new setbacks are going to be. I think that would be very helpful to us. M Mr. Chairman, let me ask you a question. Would a, building, would a building permit have been issued without a set of plans being submitted? I don't think they would have. Um, I just don't know... Okay. But they're just, doesn't, yeah, the doesn't system I can look at, I can't yeah. see the drawing. I can only see the card. Yeah, because it doesn't make sense to me that, you know, any city or town would issue a building permit without a set of plans. So I, I'm I'm kind of as confused as you are, uh, you all are. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. LeBlanc. Um, there are drawings that were issued with that building permit that you have displayed right now. 
and ah. they are the two drawings that we have before us and um with this application there's no additional oh. drawings oh okay so um, they do show they don't show an existing condition but they show the new condition and plan and elevation essentially that's correct okay So what we have is, yeah, is this. Yeah, without the modifications, yeah, that's what you should have on file. Okay. All right. So, um, I think, as we said, I think the board will vote to continue the public hearing. Uh, so on the board side, we'll I will talk to uh to my Champa tomorrow and clarify exactly what was what has been approved so far by inspectional services, um, what needs to be improved by approved by inspectional services, um, so that we can better discuss this uh, at our next hearing. And then if I could ask uh just the applicant if they could revise this set of drawings to indicate what it is exactly that they're requesting. Um, okay, didn't didn't we do that could... with the last, didn't I do that with the last three uh, things that we submitted with the, everything in the different colors? So you've got this thing? hand sketch? Yeah. Yeah, but it, so this is a, because this is really sort of, you know, a legal proceeding where the board is approving something that needs to be registered with the registry of deeds we mm -hmm. really need the documentation to be to, the documentation to be a little more formalized okay i get it so i'll, I'll have the uh i'll have the surveyor uh update this and and as well as the architect uh to uh, depict the uh, uh do, do you need let me ask you this mr chairman do, would you how, how do you want these revised do you just want one set of the with the with the addition or do you want something that differentiates the what we've already drawn with the addition uh in a different color or something like that so i do it once and do it right for you yeah so what we have so here you know this is the your site plan with the existing conditions this is perfectly fine um actually let me bring up um Uh, so like this is a site this is a plot plan from earlier this evening but you know they have the existing conditions and then dash then put in in red they show the proposed condition and the new dimensions so even okay, if you but, just did like that so we okay, know okay, but where the, the, where the do, you want the, do you want the do you want the proposed conditions including like the the approved design plus the extension in one thing or do you want yes. like three Three different things, the existing, the approved, and like kind of how I did it in three different colors. I just want to do it once and do it right for you. Right. No, I think if we had one that was the existing condition and yeah. then the the full entirety of what you're requesting, including the extension. So just those Got it. two. I'll get it done for you. Okay. Okay. And then the, uh, are we okay with the existing permit and things or am i on hold for that because i don't um, want to go yeah so up. i will talk to the i'll talk to the inspector tomorrow morning um and i'll have them contact you okay all right very good okay so the next hearing of the board is um tuesday august 13th um would that does that give you sufficient time I think so. Yeah, it should. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. gonna. I, I don't right. leave things to wait. I'll get right on this tomorrow morning. Perfect. Okay. So with that, the chair would accept a motion to continue the public hearing for docket number three eight zero nine three fourteen Massachusetts Avenue to Tuesday, August thirteenth, twenty twenty four, at seven thirty p.m. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. So roll call vote to continue. Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Mr. Riccardelli. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. Mr. LeBlanc. 
Aye. And the chair votes aye. We are continued on 314 Massachusetts Avenue. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. So then returning to our agenda. Um, what we have, that is the end of our regularly scheduled items. Um, as we had uh, noted there, uh, we have continued one hearing to August 13th. There is already one other item on for August 13th. So at the moment there's two. Um, I had emailed you all earlier uh, this evening in regards to um, the the online application portal and so the, the way things go right now um and you're all you can all sort of pretend to set up a to apply for a special permit for your own house to sort of see how it goes um just make sure to tell them not to issue the permit um <laughs> otherwise you end up on our docket but you can play through the procedure and see how it goes and the the, the thing that i've noticed is that i've the application seems to be getting worse and worse because I my sense is that people are going to the system, not recognizing that they need to have to answer a lot of questions and are just like, oh, I'll throw in numbers. Um, like I don't know if anybody noticed the previous application. I think the front yard setback was 127 feet um, on the application. So um, what I'm proposing to do is have something that anybody who's applying can they get hit with it right at the front. They can fill it out on their own time, figure out whatever what all the numbers are that they need to do, and then go back and fill it out properly. And at the same time, we would I would work with Carrie in the in the special services office to update the way that the special permit application runs, so that there are a couple of things now we're asking people for the same number two or three times. And we get different numbers sometimes, so it would ask for everything only once. Um, it would try to go in the order that things need to be calculated. And hopefully doing it that way will help us to get better results um, from the initial application. So uh, I just provided that all to you guys uh, earlier today. Um, and then I would like to add that to the agenda for next time uh, to go through. And then also I, I forwarded to Mr. Hanlon and to town council uh, to update the rules and regulations for the board so that they better align with the new online system. Uh, they were last updated in 2021, and so they're now hopelessly out of date with the way we proceed. So um, we'd like to do those two administrative things next time as well. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon? Um, so I wonder if, if as long as we're, we're doing this, if there's any, I mean, the, it would be, it would be nicer if, if we were able to get the output in a way that is easier to use uh, and i figure as long as you've got a, some software person over here trying to make changes in order to make things better that that we might want to consider whether at the same time we should focus on improving the usability of the output uh, well taken thank you Question for next time, um, since we're moving towards the way Lexington does it, um, I can kind of do a quick, quick um, overview of how we're going to be making changes to OpenGov to use that mm -hmm. with the information instead. Sorry, Colleen, we sort of missed the first part of that. It was a little. Uh, since we're going to be changing, Novus is going to be making changes and it's kind of going to just be an agenda thing. So we're going to okay. start using. Open gov um, and attachments and legal notices and everything will be on that instead. Lexington does it that way. We're sampling the same way they are doing it. Um, a little bit of Belmont, um, but I can show that next time so you can see how different the information will be coming out to uh, the public. Oh, great. Okay. So that is everything for August 13th. Um, and then after that, we have August 27th and then it's Labor Day. So <laughs> we're into September. Um, unless there's any other questions, um, 
and just also for those of you, the, so yesterday the um, Housing Corporation of Arlington had the open house for their new uh, ADU that the ZBA approved over um, on Dorothy Road. Uh, they had a really nice opening yesterday. Um, if you haven't had a chance to see it, um, you probably wouldn't be able to get a tour anymore, but you could go and take a look at it from the outside. It's really kind of neat um, what they were able to do over there. So, uh, and they did get fund a level of funding now to proceed with 10 Sunnyside. So hopefully they will be moving forward with that project as well. So with that, I would like to thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting. Especially I'd like to thank Colleen Ralston and Mike Chepa for their assistance in preparing for and hosting our online meeting. Please note the purpose of the board's reporting of the meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of its proceedings. It's our understanding the reporting made by ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. If anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the Zoning Board of Appeals website. And to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Chair. Second. Mr. Chair. Oh, my word. Christian, this is that Mr. Moore? It's a phantom. This is this is Mr. <laughs> Moore. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, can I make a brief comment, please? Sure. I just want to uh, highlight the highly unusual occurrence where I had no input on any of the cases tonight <laughs> for those who think that I just don't know how to shut up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, with that, we'll take our motion to adjourn. Mr. DuPont. Uh, aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. Ms. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. LeBlanc? Aye. The chair votes aye. The board is adjourned. Thank you all so very much. Enjoy Thank your you summer, and we'll see you all on the 13th. Night, night. Good night, everyone. Good night. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.